From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for holding this event together. If you notice and you look around, you'll notice who's fasting today and who's not. <laughs> Those who are fasting will be kind of tired, down, maybe exhausted, and all of us know exactly by the second when is sunset going to be. <laughs> Outside Ramadan, we don't need necessarily know that time. And my advice to all boards, uh, Council members, thank you very much by the way, council members, for this amazing address. My advice to you is to hold your board meetings in a day that you're fasting right before sunset. <laughs> all bills, will, no discussions whatsoever. No one's gonna fight, like, just fine, all of us are okay with this. So, uh, with that said, I'd like to share with you a few of my thoughts about our blessed month of Ramadan. And contrary to the common belief, People of faith are not supposed to blindly believe in things. They're supposed to ask, why? Why do we do certain things? Why do we believe in certain things? We are encouraged in our scriptures and our books to always ask why. And if it doesn't make sense, you should not be doing it. You should not believe blindly. Unfortunately, we are raising up a culture of blind imitators, especially among our youth and young children. So as a child, I've always wondered, why do we fast? My parents are waking up one day and not eating and not drinking for 16 hours in the heat of the summer. And I'm eight, nine years old kid who's expected to start doing the same thing in a year or two. So I was one of these annoying kids who asked a lot of questions. So I said to my parents, why do we fast? The most common answer a Muslim father or a Muslim mother will tell their children the reason of their fasting is something that maybe all the Muslims in the gathering will tell you and agree with me. My dad said, so you can feel with the poor. Beautiful. Because when you don't eat for 16, 17 hours, when you don't drink water for 16 hours, you start definitely feeling with the poor. Something that we don't often pay attention to. Look at us here in California, in Los Angeles. and so We're so fortunate. Our children are so fortunate to the point they can grab a bite from a pizza slice, and if they don't like it, just throw it in the trash. They take a bite from an apple, and if they don't like it, they throw it in the trash. Now there is a game, they play with water bottles. And we just heard that kids in Somalia and Ethiopia have to walk for miles to get water, and most of the times, the color of it is brown. We have kids around the world in Syria nowadays and Gaza, they have to jump into trash dumpsters to pick a piece of bread. So yes, that does make us feel with the poor and the needy. And that's the beautiful answer that most parents give to their children of why do we fast? Now remember, I was one of these annoying kids who keep asking questions quite often. So I told my father, so why do poor people fast? <laughs> if they already know, how does it feel? So my father thought at that time it's too much for him to explain. He said, go play with your brothers. <laughs> Dismissed me that easily. And it took me a lifetime and a journey of reading in the scripture and reading in our Quran until I find a beautiful answer. Two extra reasons why do we fast. Number one is to develop God consciousness, to develop self-restraint, so you can suppress your anger, so you can fight your temptations. When I'm sitting down by myself in my office or in my bedroom, and there's a nice bottle of cold water in the days of Ramadan, I'm not gonna drink it. Even if I'm by myself, even if there's no one watching, I'm not gonna drink it. Because God is watching. That's how we are trained to do in Ramadan. So now, when I am in my business, and no one is watching, it's much easier for me to say, I'm not going to cheat. That's why when I was growing as a teenager, growing up as a teenager, 
because of the fasting in Ramadan and this amazing training course of self-restraining and, and fighting the temptations, it was very easy for me to tell my peers, I'm not going to smoke. I've been trained on that. In our tradition, it says, during the days of fasting, if someone harasses you, if someone fights with you, if someone argues with you, your answer should be, I'm not going to respond because I'm fasting. We've been trained that all our lives during the month of Ramadan. So now when I'm driving the five freeway coming here in the morning, and the person behind me did not like the way I drive, very common, they're going to drive next to me and either say a bad word or give me a bad sign, right? I've been trained to smile and say, thank you, <laughs> and not to respond. This suppression of angers and negative feelings is something we cherish during the month of Ramadan. So that's one of the things and the beautiful benefits of fasting. And answered my question, why do we fast? Then comes the second point that I also was amazed by it. It's mentioned in the Quran that you fast so you become grateful. You become thankful. Unfortunately, a trait that's missing nowadays in the societies around us. We are a society of complainers. We should be grateful for everything that we have. The piece of date that we're going to break our fast on it. The bottle of water that we're going to drink today. I'm going to be extremely thankful for it. While a month ago, it was something I can just pray my kids with. From the moment we wake up in the morning and we see a ceiling on top of our head, we should be thankful. We should be grateful. Because thousands and millions of people are sleeping on the streets. Or sleeping in, tent, or sleeping in tents. Not because they're camping, because their homes got destroyed in a war zone or an earthquake or a tsunami or a fire or a flood. When you turn your face next to your spouse next to you, be thankful you're married. Some people might find hard to agree with, but you should be thankful. You know how many people are suffering and not able to find the right match for them to spend the rest of their lives with? Many times your kids will do crazy things at home. They might break your favorite china plate. Or they might wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and wake the whole house up. And some people complain thankful that you have a child because there are people around us who are not able they, they live all their lives not able to hold their own child and enjoy that beauty we should be thankful for the jobs that we have we should be thankful for the country that we live in I have friends of mine who have great jobs and when I call them at the end of the day to check on them I ask them how was your day and they complain they say I hate my job I hate my boss I hate my customers. I hate, I hate, I hate, and a complaint after a complaint. And I tell them, be thankful. Do you know how many people around the world would wish to be in your place and get paid half what you're getting paid? Be thankful and be grateful for everything that you have. That is something I learned from this beautiful practice of fasting. The beautiful thing about fasting, it's not limited to Muslims. Every single group of faith have this beautiful practice. And I'd like you to be always grateful and thankful. Not to settle for mediocrity or less than excellence. No. Do your best and go ahead and try your best to be the best. But also be grateful for what you have. One of the things that I'm extremely grateful tonight is what I see. Front of me. People from different backgrounds, different faiths, different cultures are gathered to break bread, to share a meal so they can exchange thoughts and experiences. I ask God Almighty to bless this gathering and thank you for honoring amazing individuals in our community and on behalf of of the Muslim community of Southern California. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for holding this event and thank you for being here tonight. Have a wonderful evening and enjoy the iftar. So.